the Justice Department pushing back against an IRS whistleblower. Uh, that whistleblower claiming there was sweeping political interference in the Hunter Biden tax probe in a letter to Congress. The DOJ writing last week, quote, U.S. Attorney Weiss has made clear in his letters to the House Judiciary Committee and members of, of Congress that he has ultimate authority over the matter, including the authority to bring a case in any jurisdiction. Former President Trump joining Maria exclusively on Sunday Morning Futures yesterday to discuss this case and the two tiers of justice. Watch. Meanwhile, Hunter Biden was uh, charged with a misdemeanor. He'll avoid jail time. Hunter Biden got a traffic uh, ticket. Compare Hunter Biden to Paul Manafort. Paul Manafort was put in solitary confinement. They wanted to destroy him. All they wanted him to do was say something bad about me. This guy had tremendous courage. He said, I'm not going to lie. He went into solitary confinement over nothing compared to what Hunter Biden's done. You know, they gave him a little charge. <laughs> Former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker joins me now. Did Hunter Biden uh, get off pretty easy on this one, do you think? Oh, there's no doubt. Good morning. It's good to be with you, too. Uh, the designer plea deal that Hunter Biden got, you know, that is specifically ignores the most serious tax charges available, which were, uh, as we all know, felonies from 2014 and 2015 tax years. Uh, and he gets two misdemeanors plus this, you know, agreement not to uh, illegally possess a gun again. I, I just think it, no one except Hunter Biden would get that deal. Yeah, well, obviously, he's the son of the current president. So I think that's would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? All right, let's talk about this. A federal appeals court temporarily halting an order limiting the Biden administration's communication with major social media platforms about most of their content. Remember, this is after the Justice Department filed an appeal for a July 4th ruling that found that the White House violated the right to free speech by having social media platforms limit the spread of what they consider to be misinformation, which included posts about COVID health policies. So, AJ Whitaker, your thoughts on this? I mean, this what we what we've discovered, and this is. Let's Let's be clear, this is the Twitter files, uh, was that basically the administration right. was using every, I mean, they were emailing Meta and Twitter, uh, you know, twice a week. I mean, it was bullying tactics. If you look at the messages that were going from the Biden administration to social media companies saying, pull this, leave this out. I mean, it was selective. It was, it was egregious. Yeah, and the appeals court is going to have a hearing on an expedited basis to dis determine uh, whether this injunction stands. But, you know, the real fundamental issue here is the First Amendment right to free speech. And the government can't infringe on that right, nor can they subcontract the infringement out to these social media companies. So I think this case is actually pretty straightforward. I'm surprised that the appeals court... Uh, acted like this, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, the First Amendment has clear protections for First Amendment speech, and what was being blocked here uh, by the government through these social media companies was clearly protected speech. So I, I think this case is fairly straightforward, but at the same time, it, it is about a very basic and important tenet of our of our constitutional framework. All right, let's let's talk about something else here that doesn't seem to add up that we've been talking sure. about this morning. So the Secret Service closed the White House cocaine investigation without finding a suspect. So they they're blaming insufficient FBI lab results and claiming surveillance video unable to provide any investigative leads. Do you buy that? Uh, of course not. We all know that the White House is the most secure facility that the government owns and most likely it has cameras everywhere and and if there was any intellectual curiosity to do an investigation they would have done it but you know it sounds like they did a, a cursory investigation didn't find any fingerprints on uh, whatever the, the container of this cocaine was and so they just kind of shut it down they could have interviewed several people they could they could there were much uh, more uh, investigative leads that could have been pursued, but they just, again, they lack any curiosity as to get to the bottom of it. But, you know, we all know that, uh, you know, the prima facie case is pretty clear. There was one cocaine addict that was in the White House. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it may or may not have been his, but, but it just seems like they really don't want to know who it well, was. To be clear, I mean, the facts are that the Biden family was not at the White House at the time. I mean, that's, you know, they were they were away. It was a holiday, you know. But I want to bring in Christian yeah, Lenzo because I think that we all... Go, yeah. go ahead. 
No, I just think that's it. That's, there's an in interesting timeline. Uh, they had been, and it was discovered after they had been at the White House. And so okay. you're right. At, at the time it was discovered, they weren't. But, you know, again, this is a, a it's speculation. Thing. Yeah, I want to bring in Chris Alenzo because I, sure. I I was telling Chris, like, there's cameras in the White House. You can't. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if we were to believe that there are no leads, um, you as former attorney general, what should we do? What should the Secret Service do to really protect the White House at this moment in time? Because it seems like a huge security failure. Yeah. Well, if they are uh, not improving the security based on this breach, then uh, that's even a more important question. So I think somebody needs to ask the press secretary, based on the fact that they're, uh, they didn't have the information necessary, what are they going to do to ensure that this doesn't happen again? Because um, that's the real question is, is what, if, if there were gaps in surveillance, um, then what are they going to do to fix it? Yeah, well, obviously, there's. it's just led to more questions uh, for Queen Jean-Pierre, sure. which I'm sure it's going to come up again this week. Yeah, AG, and the non-answer she'll give. AG, Matt Whitaker, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.